If you've recently looked for a Ferrari F430, you know that they're starting to get into a reasonable price range, somewhere around $100,000, which isn't so bad for a car like this. Except this one. This is a Ferrari 430 Scuderia, and the average price right now on Auto Trader for one of these is $260,000, two and a half times the regular F430. Today, I'm going to show you why this is. I've borrowed this 430 Scuderia from Platinum Motor Cars in suburban Detroit, which has an almost unbelievable and varied inventory of cool stuff, some of which you'll see in more of my videos over the next few weeks. They're offering this 430 Scuderia for just under $240,000, which is a huge premium over a regular F430. The most obvious reason for the premium is under the hood. The Scuderia is the high-performance version of the 430, so Ferrari added 20 more horsepower to the regular F430 for a total of 503 horses. The transmission is also faster, the 430 Scuderia has the last version of Ferrari's F1 sequential manual before they went to dual clutch, and it changes gears more than twice as fast as a regular F430. Of course, the Scuderia is also rarer than a regular F430, with somewhere around 1,500 made for the entire world. But in addition to all that, to create the 430 Scuderia, Ferrari has also trimmed off 220 pounds. That's right, 220 pounds, which may not sound like all that much, but you gotta remember, it's not like the regular 430 is filled with leather and rear DVD screens and a panoramic sunroof they can just remove to save weight. Taking 220 pounds out of an already light and powerful sports car is pretty impressive. So today I'm going to show you all of the interesting and weird and cool ways that the 430 Scuderia saves weight over a regular 430. Then I'm going to show you all of its interesting quirks and features as usual. And then I'm going to take it out on the road and see if it can justify its price two and a half times a regular F430. Of course, for more, click the link below to visit autotrader.com slash oversteer where I've written a column about my 430 Scuderia experience and I've compiled a list of the most expensive Ferrari models currently for sale on Autotrader. I'm going to start with the weight saving stuff and specifically the door panels. Now in a normal F430 you get these beautiful leather door panels that just look like an excellent thing to stare at and touch. In this thing you get a door panel. It has exposed screws. It's carbon fiber. You get a net. And that's it. Another weight saving measure you realize as soon as you climb inside the 430 Scuderi is that this is a $250,000 car with manual seats and it has exposed seat rails and the regular f430 those are covered up with acres of leather and carpeting so you're thinking well of course it has manual seats they're trying to save weight but this car also has power windows power mirrors power locks and air conditioning with automatic climate control i really wonder who the guy is at ferrari who's like yeah we can do air conditioning with auto climate but power seats no no that's too heavy continuing that thought this car has all of those automatic and power things and yet it has no radio, and it's placed as just the Ferrari logo in Alcantara. It looks very nice, but you can't listen to music in this thing. It's so weird. Ferrari's like, yeah, we want them to be able to adjust their mirrors automatically, but we don't want them to be able to listen to music. Now, there's no glove box in this car, also a weight-saving measure. You want somewhere to store your registration, insurance, vehicle paperwork? Well, you get a net. You want more storage space? You get another net. <laughs> That's it. One of my favorite weight savings measures in this car is the fact that there is no leather anywhere. I'm not exaggerating. There is no leather anywhere. The dashboard is completely Alcantara with some carbon fiber. But the crazy thing is the seats, they're not leather. They are this mesh kind of composite thing it goes up both of the seats. The headliner in Ferraris, typically all leather and very beautiful, is the same mesh. I don't know how much weight that saves, but I do know that that gets rid of the, oh, I want leather air vent slats and leather on every surface crowd. And that's probably a good thing. But of all the weight saving stuff, I think the most noticeable and possibly the most aggressive are the floors. Now the regular 430 has carpeting. All regular cars have carpeting. This thing in front of the seats has just sort of Ferrari's version of diamond plating. Under the seats, they didn't even bother with that. It's just floor with no covering over it. Another obvious weight savings tactic is carbon fiber. Now obviously a lot of cars use carbon fiber and this one has it in all the places you'd expect. It has the door panels and the rear grill and it has carbon on the dashboard and in the gauge cluster and there's a carbon center tunnel. All that stuff is pretty common but this car has carbon fiber in some especially unusual places too. For example the exterior door handle is carbon fiber. How much weight could that really save? Same goes with the seat adjustment knob. Yeah, the regular seat back is carbon fiber, but so is the little circle thing you turn 
to adjust it. There's no way that saves more than a quarter of an ounce. Also carbon fiber is the mirror housing. And that's not that unusual, but I mentioned it last because that's one of the three ways that you can really tell a 430 Scuderia from a regular F430, in case you see one at Cars and Coffee trying to pretend to be a Scuderia. Number one is the mirrors. The regular F430 has body colored mirrors, and the Scuderia, they're always this black carbon. Another one is the front bumper. The 430 Scuderia has a more aggressive front bumper with larger intakes. Take a look at the regular F430 bumper and the 430 Scuderia bumper. Finally, you have the wheels. These wheels were specific to the 430 Scuderia and they weren't offered on the F430. Of course, if all else fails, there's always the badge in back. And let's discuss that badge for a minute because I happen to think that's one of the strangest quirks on the entire 430 Scuderia. Note that I just said 430 Scuderia and the badge says 430 Scuderia, no F. You see, the regular F430 is called the F430 with the F and all of its badges and emblems and literature say F430. But this car is just the 430, 430 Scuderia. All its badges and emblems and literature say 430, no F anywhere to be found. Why did they do that? Because that's the kind of randomness you can really only get with Ferrari. But that's just one of the 430 Scuderia's quirks, and of course, there are many others. Since we're around back, another one of my favorites is back here under the hood. There's a little warning label that cautions you not to place your hand there because it's hot. But take a closer look at that warning label. Does it not look like the middle finger in the hand is extended? <laughs> like it's flipping you off? Look at that! Am I wrong? Now moving around to the other side of the car, another quirk comes when you open the trunk. To do it, first you flip a little switch, inside the car and that unlatches the trunk. Unfortunately, it doesn't open. It's kind of annoying. You have to walk around to the front of the trunk and still unlatch it. Now, a lot of cars have this and it's always annoying to reach your hand under there and try to figure out exactly where the latch is, especially on a hot day like this when the car is really hot. The 430 is the only car I've ever seen that has a helpful little guide that shows you exactly where the latch is. So you pull it and then you're in the trunk. That's smart. Ferrari's practical sometimes. Another one of my favorite quirks occurs when you get inside the trunk and you take a look at this Ferrari zipper pouch secured to the trunk with leather straps, the only leather in the entire car. Now you open it up and you discover this isn't just any Ferrari pouch, this is specific to the 430 Scuderia. It has a little flap that says 430 Scuderia, not F430, no, no, just the Scuderia. Now you open it up and there are some tools, pliers and a screwdriver, but take a closer look. This isn't any pliers and a screwdriver. These are pliers and a screwdriver with the Ferrari logo on them. That means this Ferrari specific pliers and Ferrari specific screwdriver is probably like $500 each. And this pouch is probably like $1,000. Moving on to the interior, you'll find a few other 430 Scuderia quirks, including the fire extinguisher. Yes, that's right. There is a fire extinguisher in these things and it's mounted on the floor with these rather difficult to operate straps in a very tight case. I think it would take you about three minutes to get this thing out of there while your car slowly burns to the ground. Two other interesting 430 Scuderia quirks are on the steering wheel. Now, one is about the drive mode selector switch. The regular 430 has an ice mode. Nobody's ever gonna use this car in ice, but nobody's especially gonna use a Scuderia in ice, so they got rid of that. And instead, there's just an extra track mode that allows you to run with the traction control off and the stability control on. Also cool, the shift lights on the top of the steering wheel. Everybody's doing this now. They're in every car, usually in the gauge cluster, but Ferrari came out with this first, and I remember how cool it was back in 08 when this thing had that. Everybody else was worried about the recession, and Ferrari was like, hey, check out these cool shift lights we got. <laughs> Another weird quirk about this car, despite the fact that this is a sports car from the notoriously sporty Ferrari brand, and this is the special ultra sports car version of the regular 430 sports car, there's still a sport mode. So if you want to ride around in comfort mode or sport mode, you can choose. I think this whole car should be a sports mode personally, but Ferrari's Ferrari. And finally, this car has this really cool engine start button on the steering wheel. It looks like you're about to launch some crazy futuristic race car. And that seems really neat, except for the fact that you can't just get in and push in and start. You have to turn the key first, like in a normal car, and then push in and start, which kind of takes some of the excitement away from the whole thing. And speaking of turning the key, one of my all-time favorite 430 features, when you pull the key out, it gives you a big long ding so you don't forget it. It doesn't actually know whether the key is inside the car or outside the car. It's just sort of telling you, hey, it could be inside. One more thing I forgot to mention is the horn in this car. The regular 430 has a normal horn. This thing, maybe it's a weight-saving horn? 
So the 430 Scuderia has some interesting quirks and features, and it also has some radical weight saving measures, but none of that stuff justifies why these things are worth $260,000 when a regular 430 is worth around $100,000. So for more on that, I have to get behind the wheel. The first thing you notice climbing this car is just the bare bones nature of the whole thing in the interior. You kind of hear all the stuff and you feel all the stuff and you get a little nervous about bumps. The panels stay put when you uh, turn the wheel, which is how it should be. The transmission shifting is tremendously quick for a old style F1 single clutch transmission. It's not up to the par of modern dual clutches. However, it's probably the quickest single clutch F1, F1 style transmission I've ever driven. The ride is rough and this car is pretty harsh. Uh, but that's kind of the intent. If, if, if you're going to complain about that stuff, you should have bought a regular 430. This, the whole point of this car is the ride is rough and it's pretty hard. Now, sitting in a stoplight in a lot of you know modern exotic cars, you sit and it's just kind of quiet and it, the air conditioning blows on you and it's just fine. In this, you hear that engine, you feel some rumble. Uh, you know you're in a, something a little bit different than just a regular exotic car. Wow, wow, that is fast. And I'll tell you something, the transmission becomes a lot quicker under full throttle. It's almost amazing how fast that last upshift was at 6,000 RPM. That is really impressive for an F1 style single clutch transmission. I know it's a lot quicker than 430. I can't believe it's that quick. The handling is amazing. It's actually interesting because this car is 10 years old and most 10 year old exotics I drive, you can tell they're from a previous generation. This one is tremendously precise. The steering is clearly really linked up uh, to the wheels. It feels like it is ready to go in any direction you want to point it. The speed comes on at a massive, massive pace. It's very fast. It is not as fast as Huracan 488, the most recent crop of stuff. It just isn't that fast. However, the noise is amazing. Those cars are also insulated. Oh, listen to that roar. Woo oh my God. Oh, here we go. Here's a nice corner. Oh, wow. It is tremendously flat. I I'm honestly surprised, truly, that I'm driving a 10-year-old car. The handling is a little not quite there, but barely. I mean, this thing is still uh, at the absolute forefront of, of car performance and sound and the visceral thrill of this car. I think I've gotten too soft. I think I've driven too many uh, exotic cars that were just too easy to drive. Uh, and I kind of forgot, this is what's fun. This is where you have the most exciting experience. <laughs> this is the greatest, this is so much fun. This is one of the most exciting cars I've driven. Wow, it just glued to the road. This car is absolutely glued to the road. This, the, the absolute precision of the steering is not quite there compared to the latest cars, there's no doubt. You have to do a little bit more steering work and it's, the turn-in is a little bit off, but only a little bit. And considering this car is 10 years older than the newest stuff, it's amazing. Wow. Uh, <laughs> it's just so loud and so fast and so close to the ground. And, it's just such a thrill. Um, I never, I honestly kind of thought this car would be uncomfortable and annoying to me, but it's actually so much fun to drive that I don't even think about any of that stuff. Now, with that said, if part of the reason it's fun to drive is because we're doing back roads and we found some good open spots and all that. Um, you c I can tell this isn't a car that I would want to take to the grocery store. Anybody who laments that Ferrari is now building luxury cars for the Kardashians, they should drive something like this. This is the old school Ferrari. This is the way that Ferraris were always in the past. And so that's the Ferrari 430 Scuderia. What an amazing drive that was. It may look like a regular F430, but it isn't. 
Is it worth $260,000, two and a half times the price of a regular F430? Uh, it has all the cool weight savings and it has the cool quirks that the regular one doesn't have and it has a much more impressive driving experience along with more power. Objectively, it probably isn't, but you have to remember this is Ferrari and ultra low production, high performance, special exclusive models like this one bring a premium for being the best of the breed. So not only do you have the cool weight savings and all the Ferrari quirks and the amazing styling and the extra performance and power over a normal 430, you also have the exclusivity. This is a Ferrari that's even more special than a regular Ferrari. Add all that up and yes, you are looking at a $260,000 car. And with that, it's time for the Doug score. I'll start with the weekend categories, which measure the 430 Scuderia's appeal to enthusiasts to drive on the weekends. Styling is first, that one's easy. It's striking and thrilling, but it's not the most beautiful car in the world. It gets an easy eight out of 10. Next up is acceleration. The 430 Scuderia does zero to 60 in a blistering 3.3 seconds, earning it a nine out of 10. Handling is brilliant, amazing, inspired, but a little off the pace set by the very best modern exotics. So it gets a nine out of 10. The cool factor is strong, but it doesn't really go beyond standard exotic cars unless you really know it's the special edition, so it gets an 8 out of 10. In terms of importance or significance, any Ferrari earns a high score. A special one like this deserves a higher score, so it gets an 8 out of 10. And since we're still in the infancy of the Doug score, I'm re-rating the Lexus LFA to get a 9 here because that's what it deserves. The 430 Scuderia's final weekend score is an amazing 42 out of 50, which makes it the best weekend car I've scored so far. It deserves it. If I had to choose between any of these to drive on some twisty road on a nice Sunday, it would be the Scuderia. Next up are the daily categories, which measure how much you'd want to drive it every day. We'll start with features and equipment. The Scudery has no radio and manual seats, so it's going to be below average, but it's not totally oppressive. It still has automatic climate control. That's enough to save it from a 1, but it still earns a 2 out of 10. As for luxury, which measures comfort and smoothness, this car isn't those things. It gets another 2 out of 10. Quality measures reliability and materials, and the 430 Scuderia has gorgeous materials, even if they aren't particularly luxurious. Ferrari reliability, meanwhile, is improving, especially with the F430 models, but it's still no Toyota. It earns a 7 out of 10. For practicality, the Scuderia has 8.8 .8 cubic feet of trunk space, giving it a 3 out of 10. Finally, there's value. This is a hard one. If you're looking for a thrilling weekend cruiser, it could easily be a 10, especially since it won't really lose much value. If you want something more comfortable, you might think the asking price is crazy. I personally think it's something in between. I'm giving it a 7 out of 10, which is a really strong score. That brings its daily total to just 21 out of 50, making it the worst daily car I've scored so far. I'm not surprised. This one is for weekends and back roads and racetracks only, and you don't want to drive this thing to the grocery store. Combine the scores and the total Doug score is is 63 out of 100. The 430 Scootery is great fun, but it's too compromised for most people. If you're looking for an expensive weekend toy, however, this is a really great option.